Okay, so let's talk about the last portion of the internal organs of the female reproductive cycle with the vagina. Now the vagina is a fibromuscular canal that's going to open into the vestibule associated with the external genitalia. So you'll have your vaginal orifice very closely associated with the urethral orifice. Let's talk about uh, some of the functions of the vagina. Um, the first is going to be the canal for menstrual flow. Secondly, this is going to be the inferior portion of the birth canal to the birth canal. And thirdly, it'll play a role in terms of sexual intercourse. It will receive the penis as well as the ejaculate. And we'll talk about uh, specifically what is going to form the vagina in terms of the, the muscular tissue that is uh, very capable of stretching during, during labor as well as uh, during sexual intercourse. Okay, so let's review the position. We've seen this image a few times. So you have the bladder here, you have the uterus here, the rectum here, and then right here this is going to be the vaginal opening or the, the vagina. So anterior to the rectum. And one thing I want to note here, if we think about those pouches that we just discussed in a previous lecture, you have your vesicouterine here, that peritoneal pouch, and then you have your rectouterine here. So you see it's very closely associated with that rectouterine pouch. So if you're doing a digital exam, you'll be able to, you could actually enter some type of needle or something close to the peritoneal cavity if you ever needed to, to remove any type of fluid in that region. Now also important to note, this is going to attach to the uterine cervix and you're going to have what's referred to as fornices or spaces surrounding this, this position between the cervix and the vagina. And that's what we're looking at here. Now the largest is going to be this posterior portion of the fornix. Now keep in mind that all the fornices, the posterior, the anterior, and the two lateral vaginal fornices are continuous, but this is the posterior vaginal fornix is the one that's so closely associated with that recto uterine pouch. Um, so very close to that peritoneal cavity region. All right, so the mucosa that's associated with the vagina is going to be continuous with the mucosa of the uterus. And it is going to have a very distinct acidic environment, which is important in terms of being able to kill microbes associated or entering through the vagina. But it also can be harmful in terms of sperm. So a lot of the fluids associated with semen are going to play a role in terms of being able to uh, to deal with the acidic environment associated with the vagina, specifically the seminal fluid associated with semen. There's going to be a fairly distinct layer of circular smooth muscle as well as an outer longitudinal layer of muscles associated with the vagina. And you can see it gives this very distinct rugose appearance to the muscular layer of the vagina. And one last thing that I want to note associated with the vagina is what's referred to as the hymen. And this is a very thin layer of mucous membrane, very highly vascularized, and it's going to border around the vaginal orifice, so that opening of the vagina into the vestibule. Now typically it will only cover the inferior portion of the vaginal orifice, but there is a great bit of variability in terms of this. So it can occlude portions of the orifice or it can not do so as well. Now this typically uh, will be ruptured during first sexual intercourse or other types of activities uh, before that. It's not necessarily so, but often what's left after the rupturing is what's referred to as the caruncle. And this is just a remnant that's left kind of surrounding that vaginal orifice. So now we've kind of moved uh, to the vaginal orifice. We're looking at the vestibule in this region here. So we'll continue our discussion of the external genitalia in the following presentation.